So the big winner in this New York Times story, this deep dive about the origins of the FBI investigation of the Trump campaign, clearly the Rolling Stones, since we now know the investigation was called Crossfire Hurricane from Jumping Jack Flash. But beyond that, it's really opened a can of worms. And from a media perspective, what's fascinating here, as you read through this very lengthy investigative piece in the New York Times, is the paper kind of ran a correction for what it reported a year and a half ago. It certainly walked it back. Uh, and to some extent, I give the Times a lot of credit for being willing to candidly assess the flaws of a story that first ran in the closing weeks of the 2016 campaign. Now, some people are saying, well, Times is just spinning or covering its butt or covering the butt of law enforcement officials who were the sources at the time. The, the gist of the story has to do with how the FBI, unbeknownst to even most people at the Justice Department, in 2016 opened this investigation. Uh, and the thing that was kind of buried uh, was the idea that there was a government informant or two um, who was in contact with Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, these uh, sort of fringe Trump campaign aides, which has led to uh, the president talking about his campaign being spied on and saying, this is bigger than Watergate, if true. But the other thing, uh, as the Times goes through what all these sources said then and what they say now, uh, the, the, the gist of the message is that the FBI was very aggressive in the Hillary Clinton investigation. And of course, James Comey twice talked about it publicly, once when he declined prosecution, once famously or infamously when he reopened it at the end of the campaign, but barely breathed a word about, around the same period, the Trump investigation. Uh, the spin from the Bureau is, well, we were just starting, we didn't have enough evidence. Uh, but beyond that, um, almost everyone at the Bureau, like almost everyone in America, was convinced that Hillary Clinton was going to win, so they were more concerned about uh, being held to account for what the Bureau did or did not do under a President Hillary Clinton. And almost everyone was convinced that Trump was going to lose, so why um, go public with something that wouldn't matter if he was just a losing candidate? And by the way, that's exactly the kind of political judgment that law enforcement is not supposed to make. And so that uh, was a significant advance, as was the notion of um, an informant, which I'd like to know more circumstances about who it was, how that person got in position to decide whether or not that was improper. But when the Times writes about itself, it says, well, in our story in October 2016, uh, it significantly played down the investigation, it goes on to say that law enforcement officials talking to reporters acknowledge the investigation but urge restraint. They said they scrutinized some of Mr. Trump's advisors but found no proof of any involvement with Russian hacking. And then it goes on to say the key fact of the article, this is referring to back in 2016, that the FBI had opened an investigation into possible collusion with Russia, was published in the 10th paragraph. In other words, we buried the lead, and now we're really sorry, so we're going to revisit it. And then it goes on to say the article's tone and headline, the headline was, investigating Donald Trump, FBI sees no clear link to Russia, gave an air of finality to an investigation that was just beginning. So, here we are all caught in a crossfire hurricane because, it's like everything else, this gets uh, embedded or tossed uh, around in partisanship. So if you believe the FBI uh, went too far and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, uh, with all of those incriminating texts, were out to get Donald Trump, uh, then you look at this and say, well, you know what, they're just covering their butt because more evidence is going to come out. This is the spinning in advance that the Times is helping the Bureau do uh, to help get the FBI off the hook when it comes out that uh, they didn't follow the rules, and by the way, there never should have been a Mueller investigation. If you are in the other camp, uh, you say uh, that this is actually an honest look at you know uh, incomplete journalistic fact gathering at the time, and it shows that the FBI was doing its job, but quietly, that the FBI didn't want to uh, be perceived, and some of this is in the piece, as uh, a, a, a furthering Trump's charge, candidate Trump's charge of rigging the election, so didn't want anybody to know about this investigation, just in case it ended up leading to nothing, and obviously it then led to something, and now we're still dealing with it uh, in the Mueller investigation. So you'll hear a lot about this story and the spying, the alleged spying, the informant, uh, and you'll hear a lot of spinning by both sides, which is sort of where we are in this investigation. What you won't hear that much about was the thing that the New York Times to its credit, put in the piece, but didn't exactly make the lead, and that is the New York Times in 2018 now says the New York Times in 2016 got it wrong.